<laughs> this is going so well. Have you put the cards away yet, Ben? Uh, nearly small. Oh, hello everyone. Welcome to our cafe. The best cafe in the world! <laughs> you haven't put those cards away yet, Ben. Sorry, Small, but I was just trying to finish making my house of cards. And you have. It looks great. It might get in the way of the cooking, though. Oh, yes. You're right. Are you going to help me blow it down, then, Small? OK. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. <laughs> hey! Hey, I know a really good game we could play with these cards, Small. Oh, goody. Have we got time? Of course. We don't have a customer yet, do we? OK, Small, here's what we do. Right, I'll find a card like a... Oh, a four there. So now we have to find four of something right here in the kitchen. OK, let's see. Um, oh, bowls. One, two... I can see two bowls, but not four. Oh, I can see some spoons. How many? One, two, three, but not four. Well, what about cups? How many cups? Look, one, two, three, four, yeah! Oh, great, Ben. Can I pick a card this time? Of course you can, Small. Here you go. Thanks, Ben. Oh, no! <laughs> what? What is it, Small? It's a king, Ben. A king? Ooh, that is a tricky one. I mean, there isn't a king in the kitchen, is there? No, but I think I'd make a great king. Yes, in fact, with this cloak on, whee! I think I'd make a brilliant king. <laughs> no time for that now, Small. You better get your kingly cloak off. You don't want to get it caught on your spoonmobile. OK, I'm on my way. Woohoo! <laughs> Who's our customer today, Small? You'll never guess who it is, Ben. Give me a clue. OK, she's wearing a crown and a cloak. Oh, a queen! A queen! Oh, my, we've got a queen in our cafe. I must practice my bowing. <laughs> Good morning, Mum. How very lovely to see you, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> There's no time for any of that now, Ben. Let's get cooking. I think it's time to look in my book. We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. One day I came across a beautiful castle. This was the Castle of Hearts, and inside lived the famous Queen of Hearts, the sweetest queen in the whole wide world. I knocked at the kitchen door. The cook was inside. He was in a real tizzy. You see, the Queen of Hearts was a very fussy eater, and the poor cook couldn't find anything she liked. He wrung his hands and said to me, I've tried sandwiches, I've tried jelly, but she won't put any of it in her belly. I've tried apples, juicy and scrummy, but even apples won't go in her tummy. I've tried vegetables, I've tried meat, but I can't find anything the Queen will eat. Well, as you can imagine, I had to go to her rescue. I found the Queen of Hearts in the garden. Hello, Your Majesty, I said. I'm your new cook for today. Oh dear, she replied. That's a dreadful job because I'm very fussy about food. You'll never find anything I like. What about these lovely strawberries? I asked. The strawberries look juicy and plump and ripe. The Queen tried one and... Ugh! She cried. It's too sour. Everything's too sour for me. I'm a sweet person and I need sweet things. And it was then that I had one of my brilliant ideas. I took the strawberries away and I made them into jam. Lovely sweet strawberry jam. I made jam sandwiches and when the Queen tasted one she said, Delicious! 
And from that day on, the Queen of Hearts put jam on everything. On toast, on sausages, even on cabbage. Sometimes she accidentally put it on herself. Look at me, she'd cry. I'm so jammy. Little Cook to the Rescue once again. That was a great adventure. Oh, yes, and I think it's given us a big clue about what to make for the Queen of Hearts, don't you? Way! Maybe we could cook her something with jam. Oh, yes, but what? Hmm, I wonder. Oh, we could... Oh. I know! Big Cook's Big Cookery Book! Of course, the big cookery book. There's recipes for everything in there. And where do we look for things to cook? In the book, in the book, in Big Cook's book. Here we are, Small. The perfect thing. Queen of Hearts tarts. The Queen of Hearts made some tarts all on a summer's day. The Knave of Hearts stole those tarts and took them clean away. <laughs> oh, well, that settles it. The Queen of Hearts loves jam tarts. Yes, she does, Small, and it's all thanks to you. After all, you introduced her to jam. Oh, that was nothing, Ben. <laughs> and I think we should make her some more right away. After all, that naughty knave did steal hers. That's right, Ben. I'll read out the ingredients, and I'll see if we've got them. OK, we're going to need short crust pastry. OK, over to the fridge. Here we go, yep, short crust pastry, got it, Small. And strawberry jam. Strawberry jam. Here we are. Oh, um, right, uh, OK then, Small, we've got the short crust pastry, but the strawberry jam is a problem. How can strawberry jam be a problem? Because we haven't got any. Oh, well, don't worry, Ben. I'll whiz off and get some. Only the best for our queen. Good idea, Small, and I'll get everything ready. Hey, why don't you come along too? woo -hoo! Go small, go small, whiz away! I wonder what he'll see today. Smells good in here. Strawberries to make strawberry jam. My favourite! First of all, the strawberries have to be put in a big pan. And then the sugar is added to make it nice and sweet. The strawberries and sugar have to be mixed together on the hob. Mmm, smells delicious. This mixture is being poured into the strawberries to help it thicken and become jam. Now the jam can be poured into jam jars and left to cool down. Lid on, and it also needs a label to tell us what sort of jam it is. This is strawberry jam, the Queen of Hearts favourite. Yummy strawberry jam! Better get back to the cafe. Bye! <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> hey, good morning, Mum. How very nice to meet you, Mum. Should I call you Mum or Your Majesty, Mum? <laughs> <coughs> oh, hello there, Small. <laughs> I was just um, practicing your bowing. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> hey, I brought back some jam. <whistles> oh, wow! Perfect. Jam fit for a queen. I saw it being made, Ben. It was brilliant. They put all the ingredients into a big pot. Strawberries, sugar and water. And then it went all lovely and gooey. <laughs> Sounds brilliant, Small. But we better get cooking. The sooner Mum gets her jam, the better. <laughs> right you are, Ben. We're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. Jelly boats and pirates gold, princess pea pies, carrot cakes and fruit smiles, and envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. 
We have a fantastic recipe book He is big cook and he is small Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all When your tummy gets all rumbly You're ready for a treat You can make something delicious to eat Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All clean and ready to cook. Do you remember the ingredients to Queen of Hearts tarts? You do? There was short crust pastry, one packet, and strawberry jam. Three tablespoons. We're using strawberry, but you can use any flavour you like. Whoopee! Let's get started! Hee hee! Hey Ben, you'll need to turn the oven on first. Right you are, Small. OK, then. Over to the oven we go. I'm going to turn it on to 200 degrees Celsius, gas mark 6. Shh! I'm going to get some jam. <laughs> Make sure you get your grown-up helper to do this bit for you, because remember, the oven is hot, hot, hot. What's next, Small? <laughs> oh, um, you have to do the pastry bit next, Ben. While I have a little taste. Mmm. OK, then. Here's how we roll out the pastry. Here we go. First of all, I'm going to flour the board like this and put a little bit onto the rolling pin. There. This will stop the pastry from sticking. Pop the pastry on and roll away. Oh. And I'm going to turn it every so often. There we go. Mmm. Wouldn't it be lovely to be king? I could eat all the jam in the world! <laughs> the Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole the tarts and took them clean away. <laughs> this pastry's nice and flat now, so I'm going to take this round pastry cutter and I'm going to make two circles exactly the same. One there. And another one there. How am I doing, Small? Great. You're doing fine, Ben. Now, what shall I call myself? OK. King Little Cook Small. No, no, that's too long. Um, King Cook. Um, King Small. Oh, I don't know. There we are. Great. Now, I've put this lot of circles onto a greased baking tray and now I'm going to take this heart-shaped pastry cutter here it is and cut out heart shapes from the remaining lot of circles like this and there's one over there and another one If you don't have a heart-shaped cutter, you could always get your grown-up helper to cut out a heart shape for you. I don't feel like a king yet. Perhaps some more jam might help. <laughs> Woohoo! Now I'm going to use a bit of water for this next part. I'll brush them around this pastry circle. And this will help the heart-shaped circle to stick on top. So I'll just pick it up. Careful. And place it on top of the other circle. Great. I'll just do a few more. <laughs> and now for the jam in the middle. That's funny. I'm sure there was more jam in here. Small. <laughs> <laughs> Small, it was you! Mmm! Oh, well, it's lucky I've got some more in here. Now we're going to put some jam inside every heart. When the jam gets hot, it'll spread out. And the last one. 
Brilliant. All ready for the oven. So, oven gloves on. And over we go. And remember to get your grown-up helper to do this bit for you because the oven is hot, hot, hot. In they go. For 15 minutes. I'll set the timer. For 15 minutes. There we are, cooked and cooled. Just popping them onto a plate. There. They look brilliant! Hey, perfect! <laughs> Here goes. Queen of Hearts tarts coming through. There. All done. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean. Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam. My name's Ben. And my name's Small. We've got the cleanest kitchen of all. Tidy all the bits and bobs, the things that help us do our job. Ingredients we'll put away, ready for use another day. Pots and pans will start to smell, if we don't wash them really well. And now it's clear, let's all smile, we'll be finished in a little while. All around, up and down, we've got the cleanest cafe in town. Aha, here comes the plate. Oh, yes. It looks like the Queen of Hearts enjoyed her tarts and looks small. She's left a note. Well, what does it say? What does it say? Let's see, shall we? It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, My Queen of Hearts tarts were delicious. Oh, to say thank you, here's a little gift for my friend Small, who introduced me to jam in the first place. I wonder what it is. Here you go, Small. Thanks, Ben. <gasps> wow! A crown! For me! Brilliant! Oh, it really suits you, Small. Now I feel like a real king. King of the kitchen. <laughs> See you soon. See you soon. Big cook, little cook. Oh, hello. Welcome to our cafe. The best cafe in the world. <laughs> oh, that sounds like Ben back from shopping. Oh, I'm back. Hello, everyone. Oh, oh it's a bit windy out there. Oh, I finished all the shopping. Oh, Small, I found this fantastic new bread. It's all long and thin. Oh, wait till you see it. It'll knock your socks off. <laughs> Woo! Uh. Oh, whoops! <laughs> I think it just did blow my socks off. <laughs> and my shoes, too. <laughs> oh, sorry, Small. <laughs> Come on, Small, we've got a customer. Better get your shoes and socks back on. Okay, Ben, I'm on my way. Who's our customer today, Small? Well, he's got a black hat and a black beard. <laughs> Anything else, Small? And he's got a parrot on his shoulder. Parrot on his shoulder. <laughs> oh, then it must be a pirate. Ha ha! You're right, Ben. It is a pirate. Percy the pirate. I bet he's got loads of buried treasure and a pirate ship to sail the seas. Not today, though. It's probably too wet and windy to sail on the seas. We better make something really tasty for him then. Good idea, Ben. What can we cook for him? Um, how about fish and ships? <laughs> fish and ships? Fish and ships, you know, like fish and chips, but fish and ships. <laughs> Pirates don't eat ships, they sail in them. What would a pirate like to eat? 
I think it's time to look in my book. We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. Pirates. Pirates. Oh, yes, I remember. One day I went to a desert island. I was feeling a bit lost all by myself on the beach. But I wasn't worried because I'm quite good at finding my way about. You have to be when you're as little as me. So I looked around to see what I could see. I could see pebbles, a crab, some shells, palm trees and the sea. And I could see something else. Big footprints! And do you know who they belong to? Someone with big feet. So I followed the big footprints all the way along the beach and I found Percy the pirate and a parrot on his shoulder which was nearly as big as me. And both of them were looking very sad. I'm supposed to be finding the treasure, said Percy the pirate. The other pirates sent me from the pirate ship to find the treasure, but I can't find it anywhere. Where is it supposed to be? I asked him. I've been given a treasure map, and the treasure is marked by a cross, but I can't work out where it is on the beach. Percy the pirate showed me the treasure map. On the map there were some pictures and a big cross. Now as I said, I'm quite good at finding my way about and I worked out where the treasure would be. First, we had to find two trees, then a river and the treasure would be marked with a cross. So we found the trees and the river and then we found the treasure. We dug up the treasure and Percy the pirate and his parrot were so happy we danced the night away until it was time for the pirate to go back to his ship. Little Cook to the rescue once again! That was a great adventure. Ha ha! That were a mighty fine story there, shipmate Little Cook Small. Ha ha! Buried treasure. Way! Or should I say, ha ha! <laughs> Oh, I wonder if there's any buried treasure in our garden, Small. Oh, can we go digging for it? Oh, not now. It's still raining, Small. We'd better wait till later. Oh, never mind, Ben. Let's think about what we can cook for Percy the Pirate. Well, we know what pirates really like. Treasure! <laughs> you can't eat treasure, Ben. You're right, Small. Hmm, try again. What to cook for a pirate? Hmm. <laughs> book. Of course, the big cookery book. There's recipes for everything in there. And where do we look for things to cook? In the book. In the book. In Big Cook's book. Oh yes, here it is. The very thing for a pirate's lunch. Pirate's gold. Oh, <laughs> oh brilliant. Percy the pirate will love it. It looks just like a treasure chest. Come on, Small. Let's get cooking. What does it say we need? OK, let's see. We're going to need cheese. OK, over to the fridge. Here we go. Cheese, yep, got that small. An egg. Egg, one egg. Got the egg. Plain flour. Flour in the cupboard. Here we go, plain flour, yep. A baguette. Oh, one tasty baguette. Yes. And tin sweet corn. Right, um, there we go. Tin sweet corn. Got that as well. Brilliant. Here we are. Everything we need for the recipe. Ben, what turns the nuggets golden? Ah, well, that's the most important ingredient, Small. The sweet corn. It's yellow. And yellow sweet corn will make the golden treasure. Sweet corn? Where does it come from? From this tin. <laughs> no, I mean before it goes into the tin, Ben. <laughs> oh, well, um, I don't know. But why don't you whiz off and find out, little cook? That's a great idea. I'll be back in a jiffy. Woohoo! Hey, why don't you come along too? <laughs> go small, go small, whiz away. I wonder what he'll see today. Here we 
are. What a beautiful day. These plants are really tall. They're called corn on the cob. Sweet corn grows inside those green leaves. This farmer is going to pick the sweet corn. First of all, he has to check that the sweet corn inside the leaves is ripe and ready to pick. This one isn't ready. This one isn't ready either. Oh, it's like a jungle. Here's some more corn on the cob. Is it ripe? Yes, it's ripe and ready to pick. If you peel back the leaves, you can see the sweet corn. That's called a kernel of corn. Sweet corn is bright yellow and tastes delicious. It's the colour of pirate's gold. I'd better get back to the cafe. See you later. golden treasure. Ho oh, ho! Lovely golden sweet corn treasure, that is. <laughs> I've hidden a little bit of sweet corn treasure for me old matey little cook small to find under his cup. Shh. Hey! I'm back! Then you'll never guess, corn grows on big plants as tall as you. <laughs> <laughs> and when it's cooked, sweet corn can be eaten on the cob or off the cob as little golden nuggety pieces, like in our tin. <laughs> Talking of golden nuggety pieces, Small, I've hidden a little bit of golden treasure for you to find me, Hearty. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Treasure. <laughs> but that's for later. We better get on with the recipe now, Small. Our pirate customer will be getting very hungry. So, we're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. Jelly boats and pirates gold, princess pea pies, carrot cakes and fruity smiles, and envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. He is big cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All clean and ready to cook. Do you remember the ingredients to Pirate's Gold? You do? There was cheese, half a cup, egg, one, plain flour, two tablespoons, a baguette, a quarter, and tin sweet corn, half a cup. Whoopee! Let's get started! Now the first thing we're going to do is turn on the oven to 200 degrees Celsius, gas mark six. And make sure you get your grown-up helper to do that bit for you because remember, the oven is hot, hot, hot. Now we can get on with the recipe. So. I've cut this piece of baguette in half, but not all the way through. That's a job for your grown-up helper to do. This is going to be our treasure chest. So, we're going to start hollowing out our treasure chest by taking the bread away and pop it into a bowl. And I'll do this piece at the top. There we are. That should give enough space for our golden nuggety pieces. There. So the next thing we want to do is start to crumble down these pieces of bread. Make them a little bit smaller. Okay. Let's get them all done. Just break them up. Wow! And now we can add the egg. In it goes. There we are. That's the egg. And we're going to mix the cheese and the sweet corn 
all together in a bowl with a wooden spoon. Let's give it a good old mix up there. Be careful with the mixing, Ben. Of course, Maul. <laughs> you know what happens when you start mixing. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you get all excited. <laughs> <laughs> and a big blob of mixture. <laughs> <laughs> Splatters all over me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Small? You've got gunk all over you. <laughs> I think I'd better go and clean myself up. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, Small. <laughs> Good idea. Right. Now, this next bit can get a little bit sticky. What I'm going to do is add the flour to the mixture. This will help it to go a bit more solid. And I'll give it a quick stir with the spoon. Round and round we go. And then, with my nice clean hands, I'm going to give it another mix. So, I'll put a little bit more flour onto the board and a little bit onto my fingers to stop the mixture sticking to me. There we go. And in we are. Right, we're going to roll the mixture into little balls like that. There we are. And I'll pop it onto the board and give it another roll around in the flour to give it an extra floury coating. There we go. And then we can pop it onto a greased baking tray. That's one done. I'll just make a few more. So roll it round. It's a little bit sticky to start with. There. All cleaned up. Aha, me hearties! Do you remember Captain Ben hit some treasure for me to find? Can you help me find it? Over here? No? Is it over here? No! There. That's the last of the golden nuggets, so all we need to do now is pop them in the oven. So, oven gloves on, and over we go. And make sure you get your grown-up helper to pop them in the oven for you, because remember, the oven is hot, hot, hot. There we go. And into the oven they go for 10 minutes. Or set the timer for 10 minutes. Tell me if I'm close to the buried treasure. Say warm if I'm close and cold if I'm far away. Huh? Cold. Warm, eh? There, the nuggets have cooked and cooled now. Ooh, lovely and golden brown. Cold, eh? I'll try over here. Warm. Warmer still. I wonder if my treasure's under my cup. <whistles> Yippee! Oh, thank you, my sweet corn treasure. Brilliant! Ho <laughs> ho Well done, Small. Right, now it's time for me to put these into the treasure chest. Now, I've already put some lettuce and tomato in as dressing, and I'm going to pile in the golden nuggets. Two, three, four, and five. There! When we close the lid, it looks just like a real treasure chest. Oh, that looks brilliant. And it smells delicious. Yes, it does. Here we go. Pirate's gold coming through. There. All done. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam My name's Ben And my name's Small We've got the cleanest kitchen of all Tidy all the bits 
bits and bobs The things that help us do our job Ingredients well put away Ready for use another day Pots and pans will start to smell If we don't wash them really well And now it's clear, let's all smile We'll be finished in a little while All around, up and down We've got the cleanest cafe in town Here comes the plate! Ho ho ho! It looks like Percy enjoyed his pirate's gold! And look, Small, he's left a note. Well, what does it say? What does it say? Let's see, shall we? <laughs> it says, <clears throat> Dear Big Cup Ben and Little Cock Small, that were the tastiest pirate's gold I ever did nibble on! <laughs> Thank ye, landlubbers! Here's a little something for ye. It's from me very own treasure chest. <gasps> Small! Look! It's real pirate's gold! Our very own treasure! <laughs> ho, 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 ho. <laughs> See you soon! See you soon! Big <laughs> <laughs> cook, little cook, we'll cook for everyone! <laughs> it's freezing out there! <laughs> Then close the door, or we'll be freezing in here too. <laughs> okay, give me a chance, Small. There's a really strong wind out here. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I think that's got it. Oh. 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 oh, hello everyone. Hello. Welcome to our cafe, the best cafe in the world. We've just been playing out in the snow. It was brilliant. It's a shame we couldn't last out there any longer, though, Ben. Oh yes. We thought we had all the perfect clothes for this wintry weather. We went out in our warmest coats. To keep our bodies nice and warm. We put on our scarves. To keep our necks nice and warm. We put on our gloves. To keep our hands nice and warm. And we put on our nice woolly hats. I knitted mine. It took me ages. <laughs> to keep our ears lovely and warm too. And all the warmth couldn't escape from our heads. The only parts of us that didn't stay warm we're our poor old tootsies. <laughs> our feet and toes need warm boots to go out in the snow, but we don't have any warm boots, so our feet are freezing and our socks are really soggy. Oh, yuck! So, no more playing out in the snow for us, I'm afraid. <laughs> Aha! A customer small. You better go and see who it is. I'm on my way! Woohoo! Who's in our cafe? Give us a clue, Small. Could you shut the door, please? Thank you. <laughs> it's a really big creature. Oh, is it an elephant? <laughs> Have another try. It's white and furry. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. A polar bear. <laughs> no, you'll never guess. It's a yeti. It's a whaty? A yeti. Jan the yeti. I'm sure I've got a story about him somewhere. I think it's time to look in my book. <laughs> We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. Not too long ago, I went on a walking trip to the mountains. It was very cold. And thick snow lay everywhere. Suddenly, I heard a voice. It sounded rather unhappy. Oh, dearie, dearie me. It moaned. I looked all around, but I couldn't see anyone. Just bright white snow everywhere. Who are you? I called. My name is Jan the Yeti, came the reply. Well, where are you? I shouted. And suddenly, I bumped into the leg of a very big, very furry, very white creature. Oh, there you are, I smiled. But Jan the Yeti didn't smile back. 
In fact, he looked very sad. No one can ever see me, he sighed. When my friends Brian Bear and Monty Moose come to play with me, they can hardly ever find me, because my fur is the same colour as the snow. So they just go home again, and I get so lonely. I tried to cheer Yan up. I bet you're great at hide and seek, I said. What's the use of playing hide and seek if no one can find you? Replied Yan. Then I had an idea. I think I can help you. I'll be back tomorrow. See you later. If you can find me again, said Yan sadly. When I got back to where I was staying, I got a big ball of bright red wool out of my rucksack and I spent the whole night knitting something special for Yan. The next day, after a long, long search, I bumped into Yan again. From out of my rucksack, I brought a very big, bright red bobble hat. Woohoo! Put this on, I told him. Yan did, and it fitted perfectly. If you wear this hat when your friends are coming to play, they'll have no trouble spotting you in the snow, I told him. Yan was so happy that he picked me up very carefully <laughs> and gave me a big soft yeti hug. Way! A very warm little cook to the rescue once again! That was a great adventure. Oh, brilliant story, Small. It's great that you're such a good knitter. These hats of yours are really useful. The hat for Yan was a great idea, though I do say so myself. But now we need another great idea. What for this time? We need to think about what to cook for Yan the Yeti. Ah, right. What to cook for a Yeti. Oh, I know. How about spaghetti for a Yeti? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you'd like a drink. Something wetty for a Yeti. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! Ah. I know Big Cook's Big Cookery Book. Of course, the big cookery book. There's recipes for everything in there. And where do we look for things to cook? In the book. In the book. In Big Cook's book. Look at this. Yeti pear pudding. Yeti pears in rice pudding snow. Perfect. Just the thing. Let's go, Ben. OK, little cook. You read out the ingredients and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need full cream milk. OK. No problemo. Milk in the fridge. There we are. Milk. Got it. Butter or margarine? In the fridge as well. Butter. Got that small. Pears, tinned or fresh? OK. Over to the cupboard. Pears. Oh, here we go. Lovely pears. Sugar. Here we got that as well in the cupboard. Got the sugar small. Apricot jam. Oh, lovely tasty apricot jam. I love this. Got it. Raisins. Here we go. Raisins. Got those too. And pudding rice. Pudding rice, rice. Oh, here we go. Right. Excellent. There we are. Everything we need for the recipe. Small? I've never made rice pudding before. Well, why don't I whiz off and find out how it's made and you get all the ingredients ready? Good idea. I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, why don't you come along too? Go small, go small, whiz away! I wonder what he'll see today. There's a train! Choo choo! I'm in the right place here. This lady is going to make some rice pudding. First, she needs to fill up the pan with lots of milk. Now she's adding the pudding rice. Stir it all up. That's butter and it will soon melt because it's hot in that pan. Look at all the bubbles! Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly! 
And the last ingredient is cream. Yummy scrummy! That's rice pudding. Mmm, I love rice pudding and this little girl does too. I'm really hungry now. <laughs> Bye. There, that's everything. All ready for when Small gets back. Way! I'm back! Hiya, Small. Did you have a good trip? I certainly did. It was really interesting, Ben. I saw a lady making rice pudding with a very special pudding rice. It was all lovely and creamy. Yummy! Oh, it sounds amazing. But we better get on. You're right, Ben. We've got a very big, very hungry customer. So, let's get going! We're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. The jelly boats and pirates go, princess pea pies, carrot cakes and fruity smiles, and envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. He is big cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, all clean and, and ready to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients to Yeti Pear Pudding? You do? There was full cream milk 600 millilitres Butter or margarine 1 tablespoon Pears 2 cut in half Sugar 25 grams Apricot jam 2 tablespoons Raisins About 24 And pudding rice 50 grams Whoopee! Let's get started! OK. I've turned the oven on already to 170 degrees Celsius, gas mark three. And that's a job for your grown-up helper to do, because remember, the oven is hot, hot, hot. What can I do, Ben? First job, could you get a piece of silver foil, please, Small? Big enough to cover this dish. OK, I'll go and do that. This little bit of butter is for greasing the dish. Like this. We grease the dish before the food goes in. It stops it from sticking. And just a little bit more on the sides. There we go. That's done. So now we can pour in the pudding rice, the sugar, and the milk. Let's get it all in. There we go. Oh, this is going to be tasty. And then mix it all up. Whew. Here's the foil, Ben. Ooh. Thanks, Small. There you go. Now cover the top of the dish tightly with the foil like this. That stops the rice pudding from getting burnt and brown on the top. Because it wouldn't be rice pudding snow, it would be rice pudding mud. Yuck! <laughs> Next, we can put the dish into the oven. And remember, this is a job for your grown-up helper to do, because the oven is hot, hot, hot. So, oven gloves on, and over we go. There we are, open up the oven. And then we can put the rice pud into the oven for about two hours, and you'll need to stir it a couple of times during the first hour. When the rice pud has been in the oven for a couple of hours, turn off the heat, and then take out the dish and put it to one side until later. 
Now this is a job for your grown-up helper to do. And so is this. Put the apricot jam into a saucepan. There we go. Just get the rest of it out. There we are. Turn on the heat and stir it round until it goes all runny. Can I help with the jam? Oh, yes, please, Small. Right, you need to get the spoon and dot little blobs of jam all over the rice pudding. These are going to be snowflakes. But be very careful, Small. The jam is hot, hot, hot. You want snowflakes? You've got snowflakes. Oh, it's still snowing outside. I wish we had some proper boots. I'd love to go out and play in the snow again. Me too, Ben. But I don't want to get soggy socks again. <laughs> right, now for the Yeti pears. I'm going to cut zigzag shapes out of the bottom of the pears, like this. There we go. And pop them on to the snowy rice pudding. There's one. And another. There's another. You can use the big raisins for the hands and feet and the small ones for the eyes. Yeah, and the Yeti must be really hungry by now. Ooh, that's beginning to look like a Yeti, Ben. Finished! Ho oh, ho! It looks great, Small! One Yeti pear pudding coming through! There, all done! So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet! Time to clean and put away! Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam My name's Ben And my name's Small We've got the cleanest kitchen of all Tidy all the bits and bobs The things that help us do our job Ingredients well put away Ready for use another day Pots and pans will start to smell If we don't wash them really well And now it's clear, let's all smile We'll be finished in a little while All around, up and down We've got the cleanest cafe in town Aha! Here comes the plate! Oh, yes, Small! It looks like Jan enjoyed his Yeti pear pudding. Look! He's left a note. Well, what does it say? What does it say? Hey, hey! Let's see, shall we? It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, I loved my Yeti pear pudding. Thank you. Oh, by the way, I'm still using your bobble hat, Small, and in return for sorting out my snowy problem, Here's a present which might help you both with yours, from Jan the Yeti. Hey, hey, look, Small. It's snow boots. There's a pair for you and a pair for me. Ha! Here you go, Small. Ho, ho. Now we can go and play in the snow again, and our feet will be as snug as bugs in rugs. Hooray! No more soggy socks. Woohoo! Quick, Ben, let's get our outdoor clothes on. See you soon. Ho <laughs> oh, ho! See you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Big cook, little cook. We'll cook for everyone. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Oh, hello. Welcome to our cafe. The best cafe in the world. <laughs> We're just having a good tidy up today. I'm doing the kitchen and Ben's doing the cafe. Small! 
Small! Ho ho ho! Something awful's happened! What? What is it, Ben? Oh, hello everyone. I've lost my gold ring. Oh no! Oh, well, I tried it on this morning. I'm sure I did. But just now in the cafe, I looked at my hand and it was gone. Well, I'll help you look for it. I know how precious it is. Oh, yes, it's very precious. It was a birthday present from my granddad. Well, don't worry, Ben. We'll find it. Oh, but it's so tiny, small, and the cafe is so big. It could be anywhere. <coughs> oh, dear, and now we've got a customer. Well, don't worry, Ben. I'll go see who it is, and you keep looking. I'm on my way! Whee! Who's in our cafe today, Small? Well, it's got black and white feathers, wings and a beak. Oh, so it's a bird. Oh, is it a penguin? <laughs> It's not a penguin, Ben. It's a bird called a magpie. A magpie? I heard you could bring good luck if you said, Good morning, Mr. Magpie. Where's your brother? Go on, Small, say it. OK, Ben. Good morning, Mr. Magpie. Where's your brother? <laughs> Sorry. It's not a Mr. Magpie. It's a Mrs. Magpie. And her name's Monica. I'm sure I've met Monica before. I think it's time to look in my book. We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. One day I was having a walk in the woods when suddenly something landed on my head. It was a piece of silver cloth which glittered in the sunlight. Sorry, called a voice from above me. I looked up and saw Monica the magpie peeping down at me from her nest. I love collecting shiny things, but my nest is so full that bits and pieces keep falling out. I've got so much shiny stuff up here. I don't know what to do with it all. I think I can help you there, I said. I took Monica the magpie to meet a friend of mine whose name was Manjit. Manjit was supposed to be making a shiny picture to take to school, but she didn't have any shiny things. Monica the magpie was very interested. Well, if it's shiny stuff you're after, you're talking to the right bird, she called cheerfully. All afternoon, Monica flew backwards and forwards between her nest and Manjit's house. She brought Manjit shiny paper and ribbon, glittery material and sparkly sequins. Manjit was delighted! Whoopee! I know just what I'm going to make now, she said happily. And she made a beautiful collage of a shiny magpie sitting in her sparkly nest. Manjit and Monica the magpie were both very pleased with their day's work. Manjit was really proud of her picture, and Monica now had some room in her nest, so she could start collecting more shiny things. Way! Little Cook to the rescue once again! That was a great adventure. Oh, I loved the collage that Manjit made. Didn't it look fantastic? It was brilliant, wasn't it? Monica's collection of shiny things was just what she needed. Oh, small. I've just thought. My gold ring was really shiny. Perhaps Monica found it and took it back to her nest to add to her collection. She can't have Ben. You lost your ring before she came to the cafe, remember? Oh, yes, you're right, Small. Oh, I'll be so upset if I don't find it. It must be somewhere. Let's find a recipe for our hungry magpie, and when it's cooked, we can carry on with our search. OK, then. What can we cook for Monica? No, Big Cook's Big Cookery Book. Of course, the Big Cookery Book. There's recipes for everything in there. And where do we look for things to cook? In the book, in the book, in Big Cook's Book. I don't suppose there's any shiny recipes, Ben. You suppose wrong, my little friend. Look, 
a fruity nest. The perfect recipe for our birdie customer. And even better, Small, you use shiny foil to make the nest. That's spot on perfect. Let's make it. Come on then, little cook. You read out the ingredients and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need honey. Honey, over to the cupboard. Here we go. Honey, got that, Small. Lemon. In here, there we go. Got the lemon. A cooking apple. There we go. Nice big green cooking apple. Yep. Summer berries. Ooh. It says here we can use tinned, fresh or frozen. We're going to use fresh. There we go. And frozen yoghurt. Frozen yoghurt. Oh, there we go. Nice and cold. Yep. There we are. Everything we need for the recipe. Frozen yoghurt's really interesting. But I wonder how it's made. Hey, why don't you whiz off on a yogurty mission and find out, and I'll get everything ready. That's a great idea. See you later. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Hey, why don't you come along too? Way! Go, small, go, small, whiz away. I wonder what he'll see today. There's a train! Choo choo! This is the right place! This is where frozen yoghurt is made. First of all, we need some water. The next ingredient is cream. There are lots of ingredients used to make frozen yoghurt and they all have to be mixed up together. Mixy, mixy, mixy. This sugar adds a little sweetness to the frozen yoghurt. When the mixture has been heated up and cooled down, it goes through some pipes. Hee hee, here it comes! Gloop, gloop, hoo hoo hoo! It's being collected in big tubs. Oh, it looks yummy and it's really, really cold, but it's not frozen yet. To make it freeze, it has to be put in the freezer. It's really cold in there. On a hot day like this, frozen yoghurt is just what you need to cool down. These girls and boys look like they're really enjoying it. Mmm, yummy! That was great! See you later! Ah, right, everything's ready now. So while I wait for Small to get back, I think I'll have another look for that ring. Maybe it's down here. Way! I'm back! And I found out all about frozen yoghurt. It's squeezed through a big pipe and then it's put in the freezer. <laughs> ben, how's the search going for your ring? Not too well, I'm afraid. Still no luck finding it then. We'll find it, I know we will. I hope you're right, Small. No time for worrying now, Ben. We've got work to do. Come on, then. Let's get cooking. We're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. Jelly boats and pirates go. Princess pea pies. Carrot cakes and fruit smiles. And envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. Big cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, all clean, clean and, and ready, ready to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients for Fruity Nest? 
You do. There was honey, one tablespoon, lemon, the juice of half, a cooking apple, one, summer berries, four tablespoons, and frozen yogurt, four tablespoons. Whoopee! Let's get started. Now the first thing we need to do is turn on the oven to 200 degrees Celsius, gas mark six, and remember. This is a job for your grown-up helper to do because the oven is hot, hot, hot. Then put the berries and honey into a mixing bowl and use a fork to mix them and squeeze the fruit a bit. Now give them a good old mix-up. Then you add the four tablespoons of frozen yogurt. And mix it all up again. Hoo hoo! Lovely and mushy. Pour the mixture into a container, then put it in the freezer for three hours. In it goes. All in. Pop on the lid, and over to the freezer. It's in the freezer now, Small. What's next? Have you washed the apple? Certainly have, Small. Now you need to take out the core and make sure the hole's big enough. For the filling. Okay, here we go. And make sure you get your grown-up helper to do this bit for you. Then you need to brush the inside of the apple with lemon juice. And we'll need some silver cooking foil. I'll go and get that, Small. Brushing the middle of the apple with lemon juice stops it from going brown. There you go, Ben. Thanks, Small. Brushing on the lemon. After you've brushed the inside of the apple with lemon, cover it in foil. So we wrap the apple in the foil like this. Oh, it's lovely and shiny. Then pop it onto a baking tray, and then put it in the oven for 35 minutes. So, oven gloves on, and over we go. There we go. And remember, this is a job for your grown-up helper to do. In the oven it goes for 35 minutes until it's nice and soft, but not mushy. I'll set the timer to. Thirty-five minutes. Hey, small! I've just remembered a rhyme. It's all about different numbers of magpies and what that's supposed to mean. Oh, let's hear it then, Ben. Okay, it goes like this: one for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret never to be told. I think Monica will bring us good luck, and we'll find that ring of yours, Ben. The apple is cooked, and the frozen mixture's ready too. Okay, here we go. Out it comes. Close that. There we go. What's next, Small? You carefully open the foil and make a nest shape with it around the apple. Okay, and remember. This is a job for your grown-up helper to do because the foil is hot, hot, hot. Opening it out and roll it up a little around the edge. Then you put the apple and the foil nest onto a plate and put the yogurt and fruit mixture into the middle of the apple. Okay. Here we go, onto the plate, and let's scoop in the yogurt. 
This looks tasty. A little more, I think. Last thing, if you have a few berries left, you can use them to decorate the top of the apple. And it just so happens we have. Ta-da! Sprinkle them on. There we go. One shiny fruity nest coming through. There. All done. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean. Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam. My name's Ben. And my name's Small. We've got the cleanest kitchen of all. Tidy all the bits and bobs, the things that help us do our job. Ingredients well put away, ready for use another day. Pots and pans will start to smell if we don't wash them really well. And now it's clear, let's all smile, we'll be finished in a little while. All around, up and down, we've got the cleanest cafe in town. Aha! Here comes the plate! Oh, yes! And it looks like Monica enjoyed her fruity nest. Look, Small, she's left a note. Well, what does it say? What does it say? <laughs> Let's see, shall we? It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, My apple was delicious! Thank you! And I love the shiny nest. Do you mind if I take it away with me? By the way, you know how good I am at spotting shiny things? Well, I spotted this under the table, so I'm going to give it to you as a thank you present. Love from Monica the Magpie. <laughs> I think I know what Monica's found. Do you? Oh, ha, ha, small! It's my ring. Monica's found my ring. <laughs> oh, I must have dropped it earlier when I was cleaning the cafe. Way! Oh, I'm so happy I could jump for joy. In fact. <laughs> I think I will. Whee! I knew you'd find it, Ben. <laughs>